Nirvana, a state of perfect happiness, an ideal or idyllic place. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that MX Linux Beta 19 will put you in a state of perfect happiness or that it's the ideal or idyllic place. But I do want to make the comparison that you will be happy with MX Linux if you're a new user and that it could be ideal for you and your system. Now, I've got several reasons I want to cover why that is. Typically, when someone new to me said, or new to Linux says to me, hey, what distro would you recommend that I try or that I use? I typically will direct them to Ubuntu and Linux Mint. Um, those are two of the most well-known for their configuration and the things that are in place to help a new user get things set up and running. But MX Linux is certainly going to be right at the top of my list. And really, I don't know why it never occurred to me before. I did a previous video uh, probably over a year ago calling uh, MX Linux the uh, Dribble tool of distros because of their tool set. So let's jump over here and take a look at that. And once we're done there, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, makeup of MX Linux. So we'll hop back and forth a little bit. This isn't a review because this is a beta. Um, but it's certainly one of those areas where uh, it's been stable for me. I've run this for about four days, actually on a laptop, and I was traveling and um, had to get a little work done uh, traveling and was in a hotel. And I loaded this up and I thought, man, I hope the Wi-Fi is good. Um, you know, I'm probably going to have to set a lot of things up here. But actually I didn't. I was able to hop in, get done everything I needed to get done and didn't have to really add a thing to the system. All right, here's the MX Tools portion, and this is an area where, you know, 15, 20 years ago, as someone exploring Linux and trying to figure it all out, this would have been an absolute godsend right here because you've got everything packaged in a nice graphical presentation, um, how to make a live USB, or, or, or right here, click on this, you're going to launch into the ability to make a live USB, take a system snapshot, but the area that would have really been helpful is under Setup here, uh, for driver installation had you had an NVIDIA uh, card, network assistant, the hours I used to spend trying to get Wi-Fi drivers to work back in the early days. Uh, tweak, we'll hop over that for now. System locales, uh, codex installer, sound settings, select your you know sound card, that kind of thing. Uh, Conky here, that's for your system monitor, clock, those kinds of things on your desktop. Again, system sounds and then setting up the keyboard. Um, I'm going to pop around a little bit here. Boot options, very helpful. Boot repair, you don't always see that in other Linux distros. Cleanup, you don't always see that in other distros. I'm going to pop over to cleanup just to give you an example here. And so you can choose to clean folders, your cache, delete old logs, and empty the trash. And you can set that up as a schedule for daily, weekly, or monthly and you would hit apply so that's nice there and you don't always see that i device mounter so if you have an iphone or uh, an ipad you can use this tool to set things up and i am not an iphone user so we won't go through that process and you'll notice as i close out the individual tools you pop right back to this um, placeholder here for all the individual tools you can also find them over here in the whisker menu if you go into um, settings you'll see some of these listed so you've got tweak individually so you could just go in and choose those different tools individually but I like that it's all here in one window that just makes it easy uh, to find your way around and to quickly navigate to what you need without you know searching or and in some cases if you're new you don't know what to search for uh, so this can help you out here tremendously. And so that's one area for a new user where I think, again, it's just going to be a, a, standout, uh, a standout helper for someone trying to get their system set up for the first time. The other area, I want to go to FAC here. I hate the panel on the side. How can I move it to the top or bottom like I prefer? So that's one of the standout things here. MX Linux using the XFCE desktop. And we'll talk more again here in just a minute about what's new, some of the newer features. Um, but having the panel set up here on the left, and they've gone to some time and effort to get this set up to work well. Your minimize windows are here. And uh, 
then your uh, applets and everything located here with your whisker menu launcher here at the bottom. Uh, not everyone likes this to the left here. It makes sense on widescreen monitors uh, from a real, real estate layout standpoint, but you know, to each is on. All users have their way of using things, and I am sure they've gotten this exact question as it's listed here. I hate the panel on the side. How can I move it to the top or the bottom like I prefer? So they tell you where to go to do that. Can I use Ubuntu PPAs, for example? And they have links to back up or allow you to click into the areas you need to to go deeper into the fact here. Uh, so I won't read through all of these, but this is well done. And it's brief enough to where you can get through um, some of the main questions. So maybe you're not a new user, but you want to know about flat pack snaps and app images. So again here, links to take you right in for more details. So very well done, whoever took the time to put that together. And you don't always see um, that fact stand out right here on the desktop with distros. And that's another area where as a new user, you got the manual right here and the fact. Now the manual on this is stand out. This is exceptional compared to some of the manuals I've seen or the lack of manuals, period. Uh, here, this is very extensive. And... Um, but at the same time, it's, it's easy to follow and easy to understand. So kudos, kudos, kudos to whoever put this together or whatever team put this together because it's very well done. So I want to hop over here to our positions. And this goes through, this could be helpful to someone reading through. So for example, you'll hear people talk about in the Linux community system D and you've got camps for and against and all kinds of opinions on system D on why, why not to use it or why it's fine to use. Well, MX Linux uses what's called system D shim and it, it emulates system D functions and basically make some of the other helpers or programs that are launching like cups for your printer or network manager. It makes them see um, an emulator basically that's like it's like system D is running, but actually it's never been initialized. Um, so system D looks like it's there, looks like it's doing what it should be doing or is supposed to do, uh, but it's actually not. So that's kind of cool the way they've got that set up. So here they show their non-free software stance. They go on to say that it's fundamentally a user-oriented OS and it includes certain amounts of non-free software to make sure that the system works out of the box as most people, especially new users, are going to expect it to work. I mean, let's face it, we're not in a world today where people have patience to, to spend three hours to get something set up and running. People today expect things to just work. Um, you know, the uh, Android tablets and the iPhones and the iPads and everything, everything just works. It's in much uh, more simplified. And that's kind of the way, uh, you know, generations now expect that their operating system is going to just work. You look at Chrome OS, uh, there it's very simple. It's all through the browser, but everything kind of just works. There's not a whole lot of setup and and tinkering here and there and tweaking to get things to work. And so I understand why they add non-free software or the ability to set up your codex and anything non-free there into the system for new users. And I'm all for it because the more users we get, the more developers will look to Linux um, as, you know, a major growing platform. And I think we'll start to focus more for the higher end quality software. We're getting there on gaming. Um, you're seeing Linux users now enjoy the fruits of labor of, of people who have talked about gaming forever and now it's here with Proton and, and uh, seeing some major titles come in. So that's really going to help. We need the same for major title software as well, as good as some of the software that we have that's free is. All right, let me get off my soapbox, soapbox there. But again, just I'm going to scroll down through here, the kernel. I just, I just, whoever did this is just high praise here from Linux Quest. Um, but again, this is an area you can spend time in as a new user. I mean, this is good stuff the way it's laid out. All right, so I've harped enough there, uh, so we'll move on. Um, I want to talk about XFCE as a desktop for someone new. And the way this is set up, I think that um, 
you know, you'd have no problems at all. Here's the whisker menu. While this is not my preferred way of laying out the whisker menu, it's kind of coming around having your main categories here on the right as opposed to the left. But the nice thing about Linux is, is you can change all of this around. And I've actually got a video or probably more than one video uh, showing ways to change the whisker menu. I've left everything that you see here um, intact. This is the way you'll see it when you launch into beta one with the exception of I turned off the application description. Just uh, that's an area where I, I, I don't need to read that, but as someone new, it would certainly be helpful. Now the MX tools here, it's got its own category. So you'll see individually listed um, in the what in what was in the window that we first launched into and, and took a look at. Now if I'm going to go over here to tweak. They've done some things here other than just the panel on the left. And if you're one of the people who can't stand the panel on the left, you want it on the bottom or the top, you can change that here. The other thing I wanted to point out are some of the uh, built-in themes into MX Linux. You've got MX Dark and Light. Played around with this for the most part when you switch over to Dark. Um, the switch uh, is pretty well instant. You may have to log out and log back in for some of the applications to fully take on the dark mode. And then, you know, if you look at, say, uh, Caden Live, for example, it does okay with dark mode, but it's, it's not ideal. Uh, but here, this is just a, a quick and easy way to switch things over with some built-in themes. Compositor settings, and this is probably, you know, not an area somebody new is going to get into right away but they, they've laid it all out here, easy to follow. Let's see here, the speed is absolutely there. Uh, I'll tell you what, I promise we talk about some of the new things. Um, so beta one, and this came out August 25th, been running this for mm, four or five days. And uh, so XFCE 14, or excuse me, 414, um, there are tons of videos already about what's new in XFCE 414. Uh, this was like four years in the making. We can go through the blog post real quick. That's where you'd want to go. And there's a pretty good rundown of improvements. And it is a very nice release. It, it brought along some things that have been needed for some time. If you talk to people who are XFCE users, even they'll tell you that it was getting a little long in the tooth, a little outdated. But now you've got things like... Um, you know, fixing display flickering, which was a big issue for many people. High DPI support, you know, monitor-wise. Um, support for, uh, or GLX support now for NVIDIA uh, closed source drivers. And uh, so improvements there, improvements to the panel, improvements to the desktop. Now you see the support of r &R's primary monitor feature, where before it was a little wonky with multiple monitors, but now the, the settings are a lot easier. So a lot of that is built in, and that's what you'll get. And, and let's see, I'm going to scroll on down here. Um, oh, one of the big things for me with XFCE, you see here the, the panel icons on the left here. Well, if you were to increase the size of this panel, uh, forever what you would get in XFCE was where the volume icon, for example, would get like crazy large compared to the size of the other applet icons. I think it was, see, it was volume and maybe it was the Wi-Fi icon that for whatever reason you would increase the panel size to maybe bring up the size of these icons as well. And uh, anyway, it would get a little wonky with, with these icons becoming extremely large. Now they fix that and you can go in and uh, I think it's just with one click option, uh, switch on to normalize all of these icon sizes. So that was a biggie, you know, one of those little nagging things that didn't stop you from running it. So you get all of these new XFCE improvements built into um, MX19. Uh, let's go back here. Anything stand out? I just want to make sure I'm not missing to talk about. It's based on Debian. So Debian 10 Buster. And, and this would include the latest updates. Uh, updated GIMP, updated MESA, and updated firmware, firmware kernel uh, 4.19.5. Uh, looks like a really uh, recent Firefox video player and pretty 
pretty recent Thunderbird, I believe. However, this is not the most recent LibreOffice, I don't believe. But you can update that on your own. Um, stability, like I said, since I've been running it, this feels like a baked, ready, stable system. I mean, I haven't had a single glitch. There are some updates. I have not gone through the update process. I actually left this so we can kind of take a look. This is not a review because it's a beta, and I just don't. It's never fair, in my opinion, to do a review of an uh, of a distro or an operating system when it's in beta version. Um, but here it looks like mainly the MX tools is being updated. Twenty upgraded. It looks like primarily okay. So Grub themes, a few themes, and uh, system tools is primarily in the update here. We're going to go ahead and skip over that upgrade for now. Right click options as you should have. New users are expecting to see this and one of the things built in here open root Thunar here. So if you're in the file manager not every distro gives you the ability to say go in via root uh, from right click. So Really, this is just a quick rundown of, of what I'm seeing in the beta, but the thought came to me, why am I not recommending MX Linux to new users out there? Um, that's going to change. It's going to be on really the top of my recommendation. You're, you know, you're on a very stable Debian platform with a very fast um, desktop which is designed to run well on older hardware, and it does, and it's plus it's got some nice new recent features. You combine that with MX Tools, which is phenomenal, as well as a phenomenal manual, user manual, and um, a nice fact rundown. If you are on YouTube and you're checking out Linux videos, I'm not giving myself a plug here, uh, but I am going to pull in Dolphin Oracle. And the reason is, a Dolphin here is one of the team members for MX Linux and let's see here run with the dolphin so that's what you want to search for is run with the dolphin and you're going to see lots of videos and uh, community videos let's see here he's posting various reviews now I know he's got more updated stuff than this here we go one month ago a shout out to his channel here run with the dolphin and this will be very helpful here, you know, as well as other reviews, English Bob. Uh, so you can see other reviews. And then Dolphin has a ton of information as well about updates and kind of what's going on community-wise and developer-wise uh, with the distro. So make sure you check out his channel. All right, well, we'll wrap it up there. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.